Greetings and welcome to the O-Level Revision Series and this is part 2 of the chapter on logarithms and in this video we'll be looking at the laws of logarithms. The success criteria for this lesson is very simple. We just have one success criteria and that's to be able to apply the five laws of logarithms which will be the product law, quotient law, power law, change of base law and the reciprocal law. Let's start with a recap of the eight index laws. Pause the video here and see if you can recall all eight. Here are the left hand sides of the laws in case you need a hint. Now let's go through the laws. The first two are your laws of addition and subtraction. When you multiply two indices of the same basis together, you add the indices. When you divide, you subtract the indices. The next law is the power law. When you raise a base of A to the power of M followed by a power of N, you multiply the two indices together. Law 4 and Law 5 are your distribution laws. The last three laws, they are your special indices. So for your zero index law, it states that anything raised to the power of zero gives you one except for 0 to the power of 0. So that's a special exception. Your negative index laws, so when you raise a power to a negative index, you switch that number from the numerator to denominator or vice versa. And lastly, we have our fractional index law that states that if you have a power of 1 over n, you will turn it into the nth root. Recall in the last video, we introduced the idea of logarithms which is basically another way to write an index form equation, but this time the subject is different. Instead of writing y equals to a to the power of x, we can say that x is equals to log base a of y. We also note that the base cannot be 0, 1 or a negative number, and you cannot take log of 0 or negative numbers. When we see log base a of b, it is good to think of it as a to the power of what gives me b. So special results are log base a of a. It's like asking a to the power of what gives me a? Well, a to the power of 1 gives me a, so the result is always 1. What about log base a of 1? It's asking a to the power of what gives me 1? And the answer is 0. Let's now go through and prove the five laws of logarithms before we try applying them. The first law is the product law. It states that when we add logs of the same bases together, and this same base is very important, we are going to get log base A of x times y. The proof is as follows. We will reference the indice laws by first letting uh, log base A of x equals to m, and log base a of y equals to n. Then we will convert both equations from their log form into their indice form. Then we multiply both equations together. So the left hand side will be just x times y. And on the right hand side, we will apply our indice laws of addition. So a to the power of m times a to the power of n gives us a to the power of m plus n. This equation, now we can switch it back from indice form back to its log form and we will substitute away m and n to give us law 1. In the second law, which is the quotient law, we just need to make some amendments to law 1. So instead of adding, we are subtracting one log from another, and this time we will get the quotient x over y. And remember, for this law to be able to be applied, we need the logs to be of the same base. Now the rest of the proof is quite similar. We let both logs be m and n, we convert their forms, but this time we are going to apply the indice law of subtraction. So we're going to divide x over y and we're going to divide a over to the power of m by a to the power of n and that will give us a to the power of m minus n. So the result will be law 2. I hope that you can also appreciate from this derivation how the first two laws of indices are connected to the first two laws of logarithms. 
Now let's pause here for a quick activity for you to appreciate the usefulness of the product and quotient rule. You can also later scroll down to the info section and I have uh, placed an applet there for you to see the digital version of this. Now, the idea is that long before calculators were pervasive in the classroom, students used something known as the slide rule to do quick multiplications. So how it works is that you have a ruler like this green one shown, but you notice that the numbers are not equally spaced apart. They are arranged on a log scale. So the distance from the number one to the number two is the same as the distance from the number two to the number four. And that's the same distance as from number four to number eight. So what we need is uh, two of these rulers. And with this, we can multiply numbers. So let's try multiplying the number 2.9 with the number 1.9 on this primitive calculator. So I'm going to slide the blue ruler until the number 1 is at 2.9. Then, since I want to multiply 2.9 with 1.9, I find 1.9 on the blue ruler and I read on the green ruler what value I get. So you can see it's approximately 5.5 there. The actual answer is 5.51, but you see it's very close. So how this works is because of the in the product law in logarithms. Log 2.9 plus log 1.9 gives us log of 2.9 times 1.9. So since we have arranged the numbers on a log scale, just by adding the distances of the numbers together gives us the product of two numbers. So check it out in the applet below. Moving on to law 3, the power law, which states that if I have log base a of x and x is raised to the nth power, I can take out the exponent n and change it to the coefficient n to get n times of log base a of x. So the proof is quite simple. We can rewrite x to the power of n as x multiplied by itself n times. So applying law number 1, the product law, we will just get log base a of x plus log base a of x, adding by itself n times. So with that, that gives us n sets of log base a of x. So we can simplify it and prove law 3. Law number 4, the change of base law. This states that if I have log base a of b, I can change it to log base c of b over log base c of a. The proof goes as follows. I will let log base a of b be k. Next, I'll convert this to in this form. This will give me a to the power of k equals to b, and I can take log of both sides for any base I like, and I'm going to just introduce a new base, base c. So I take log base c of both sides, and you can see that I can apply law number 3 and take out the k. Since I have a to the power of k, this will become k times of log base c of a, which is still equals to log base c of b. And I can bring the log base c of a to the right hand side as the denominator. So lastly, I just replace k with log base a of b, and I have proved the fourth law. Law number five is just a special case of law number four. Since I can set the base to any number, I'm going to set it to be equals to b. This way, in my numerator, I'll get log base b of b, which is just 1. So law number 5 is just very simple. It states that log base a of b gives me the reciprocal of log base b of a. And with that, we are done with all five laws. Now let's apply the laws in exercise 1 without the use of a calculator. Could you evaluate these two parts. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. So for part A, we have three logs of the same basis. We're adding the first two together, so we'll apply the product law. We'll multiply 3 by 24. But since we're subtracting log base 6 of 2, we will divide by 2. 3 times 24 over 2 gives us 36. Log base 6 of 36 is just asking 
6 to the power of what gives me 36? And the answer is 2. In part B, this looks quite complicated because they have different bases and you're multiplying them together. So the trick here is we'll apply the change of base law. And we could pick any base, I'll just pick the natural log. So we'll take ln of 81 divided by ln of 4 multiplied by ln of 8 over ln of 27. So we can simplify this. This will give me ln uh, of 3 to the power of 4 divided by ln to the power of 2 square times ln to the power of 2 cubed divided by ln to the power of 3 cubed. Now using law number 3, I can take out all their powers. And you will see there's a lot of things we can cancel away. All that's left will be 2. And that's our final answer. In exercise 2, let's try to use a calculator and evaluate these two logs to three significant figures. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So we can't normally solve this without the use of a calculator because it's asking 6 to the power of what gives us 19. And there's no power, there's no nice power of 6 that gives us 19. So this is where the calculator comes in, as well as applying the change of base law. So I can set it to the common log. I'll take log base 10 of the numerator 19 and log base 10 of 6. Now, you could have chosen the natural log as well. And either way, you'll get the same answer of 1.6433 and you'll round it off to three significant figures of 1.64. Similarly, for part B, you can take the common log or the natural log. It will still give you 3.32 to three significant figures. Exercise 3. Given that log base A of 2 is N and log base A of 3 is P, expressed in terms of N and M, log base A of 18 and log base 3 of the cube root of a. Pause the video here and give this a good try. So for part a, we will apply the product law. We can convert 18 to 2 times 3 times 3, and that will just be log base a of 2 plus log base a of 3 plus log base a of 3, which is n plus p plus p, or n plus 2p. For part b, we can take out the cube root using the third law because the cube root is just a power of one third. So we'll get a coefficient of one third. Now the base is not A, so we can do a reciprocal here. So I'll get one third and the log base three of A will become one over log base A of three. And I can just replace the, that and that will get one over three P. Bonus question. Simplify a to the power of log base a of b. Pause the video here and give this a good try. Now I like to think of this question as the introduction to the sixth law of logarithms. So some of you might have intuition to this as well because on one hand you're taking a to the power of something, on the other hand you're taking log base a of that thing as well and these two are inverse functions, they should cancel each other out to give us b. So let's prove it. So we can let k equals to a to the power of log base a of b, and we're going to take log base a of both sides. Now on the right hand side, we can use the third law to take out the power log base a of b out, and that's going to leave us log base a of a, which is just 1. And since log base a of k gives us log base a of b, by comparison, k must be b. And since uh, we are let k equals to the original thing, that means a to the power of log base a of b has to be b. So let's now reflect on the success criteria that we've set out at the start of the lesson. Are we now able to apply the laws of logarithms? Do we know the product law, the quotient law, the power law, the change of base law, as well as the reciprocal law? So if you have any questions about what I've covered in part 2, post it in the comment section below. With that, we've come to the end. 
Stay tuned for part 3 where we'll be looking at solving logarithmic equations as well as the heartaches that accompany it. Thank you and have a great day of learning.